Good morning. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our service here. For those of you here in person, for those who are sharing with us at this time on our Zoom and on our telephone links, and also later on to those of you who join us on YouTube, we welcome each and every one of you as we gather for worship here today. And we're so glad to have Anna Roising with us today. She's going to be our soloist for this morning. And she's going to begin our worship as she sings for us, For the Fruit of All Creation. So a number of uh, announcements to make for this morning. Uh, first and foremost, uh, to remind people that starting this Wednesday, our Wednesday Eucharist will also be an in-person experience as well as on Zoom, which we've been doing for and on the telephone for the last many months. But we will be able to invite people in to share on Wednesdays as well as on Sundays in person now. But as with the Sunday service, and it continues to be the case, as with Wednesday, to phone in and book a spot, and uh, then we can keep track of who's coming and make sure that we have our spaces. We have almost 30 here today, so we're getting close to capacity here, so remember to phone in and just let the office know that you're planning to be at church either on Wednesday or on Sunday. Uh, I want to note the uh, celebrations for this week, and we have both birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate. We have a happy birthday to Rob Castle, Pauline McAdam, Jack Alexander, and Marla Scott. Happy anniversary also to Ian and Margaret Officer. So we ask God's blessing upon each of you as you celebrate in the coming week. As always, I thank everybody that participates in helping to make the, the worship come together week in and week out, and uh, we very much appreciate you volunteering and offering your, your gifts in various ways to make these services meaningful for all of us. So, a welcome to you all again, and our service begins on page two with the liturgy. I invite you to stand, we'll take a moment of quiet, and then we'll begin. The heavens declare the glory of God. The plants and trees show God's presence. God of all creation who moves and inspires us through every time and season. Grant to us grace and humility so to order our lives that we may honor you among all peoples and nations. Take, 
Teach us to see and hear your power in the winds and waves, mountains and valleys, so that we may glorify your goodness to us and live rightly in your creation. As we remain standing, would you please join me in the collect for today found at the top of page three. God of unchangeable power, when you fashioned the world, the morning stars sang together, and the host of heaven shouted for joy. Open our eyes to the wonders of creation and teach us to see all things for good, to the honor of your glorious name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver or gold. The rich and poor have this in common. The Lord made them both. Those who plant injustice will harvest disaster, and their reign of terror will come to an end. Blessed are those who are generous, because they feed the poor. Don't rob the poor just because you can, or exploit the needy in court, for the Lord is their defender. He will ruin anyone who ruins them. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 125. We'll read that responsively by the half verse. Those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, the wicked will not rule the land of the godly. O Lord, do good to those who are good, but banish those who turn to crooked ways, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the letter of James. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgment are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed. It is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committed, committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's law. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel reading. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre. He didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in, but he couldn't keep it a secret. Right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter. Since she was a Gentile, born in Syrian Phoenicia, Jesus told her, First, I should feed the children, my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord, but even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed, and the demon was gone. Jesus left Tyre and went up to Sidon before going back to the Sea of Galilee and the region of the Ten Towns. A deaf man with a speech impediment was brought to him, and the people begged Jesus to lay hands on the man to heal him. Jesus led him away from the crowd so they could be alone. He put his fingers into the man's ears, then spitting on his own fingers, he touched the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephatha, which means be open. Instantly the man could hear perfectly and his tongue was freed so he could speak plainly. Jesus told the crowd not to tell anyone, but the more they told them not to, the more the news spread. They were completely amazed and said again and again, everything he does is wonderful. He even makes the deaf to hear and gives speech to those who cannot speak. The Gospel of Christ. Lord, uphold me that I might uplift thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The, the other announcement I forgot to make at the beginning of the service is to point out that today begins for us liturgically the season of creation. 
And that's a, a, a relatively new season for us here in the Canadian church in celebrating God's creation and all that is good in that creation and, and reflecting on our responsibility as the stewards of that creation in the name of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the season of creation really came into being at our last General Synod about uh, four years ago when the General Synod decided to follow what the many other churches around the world are doing in observing this wonderful season of the church. And what a, a perfect time of the year for us to do that. Uh, and as we await for the harvest and as we begin to, and I hate to say it, I've seen actually many trees whose leaves are already changing, but nonetheless, it's beautiful. So I take joy in, in all of those things. I was sitting out drinking my coffee this morning and there was the sweetest little bunny hopping around my lawn. Uh, God is so gracious and good to us through God's creation and the gifts he gives to us. And so we start the season of creation together. And the theme for this year, for this season, is a home for everyone. And uh, Father George and I talked about this, well, it's quite a while ago now, so many weeks ago. And we're talking about the theme and, and, and the, the idea of a home for all. And I must say that that image, that idea has been, well, I was going to say rolling around, but more rattling around in my head over these last many weeks, if Father Ted agrees with that. And, uh, but rolling around, as I, I'm thinking, well, what, what do we think of when we think of home? You know, we have wonderful expressions about home, don't we? We have home is where the heart is, right? And, and, uh, uh, and, and we think of what that's all about in our own lives. Well, Home for me, if I look, think of when I was a, a young man, a child, as a father with my own children, and now I have to announce this, that I had a new grandbaby this week on Tuesday, and little Avery Clear came into being, and she's just the sweetest thing. But that, that image of home, and what makes a home a home? And it's a place where the, the people in the home have a mutual love and concern for each other. It's a place where those people support each other through good times and celebrate together, uh, celebrate the good times and support each other through the difficult days. It's a place where we respect one another and care for one another and one another's well-being. Uh, it's, it's a place of, of that ever-present love of God at the heart of it as we gather as family. And, and home for me has always been not about a building any more than the church is about this building, but the people who are there. That's what makes home a home. It's the people. And in this season of creation, we're being invited to think about what that idea means beyond just ourselves and the particular home and family that we, we live with and share with in life but to expand our vision for what it means to be living in a home together. I must say, uh, one of my favorite Eucharistic prayers in our prayer book is number four. They call it the Star Wars prayer, which doesn't do it any, any favors, really. But it reminds us that God is the creator. And my favorite line out of that prayer um, is the line, this fragile earth, our island home. And a reminder and encouragement for us to see not just our own home, not just our own neighborhood, our own community as being something to be concerned about, as, as being our home, but to expand our thinking beyond that to seeing this whole world, this whole planet, this beautiful creation of God as a home that we share with brothers and sisters from one end to the other. And like we would with our own family at home, to have concern for them and to care for one another and the well-being of each one. And that's the invitation today in this it's beginning of this season of creation. What is a home and what makes a home? Well, then you, you jump to the readings today and, and you think, I... I, I I went through it other than our prayers. I don't think any of the readings refer to creation at all for today. Not one word about it. But it, what, what it does do is reminds us of who our family in this fragile earth or island home are. It's all of our brothers and sisters, rich and poor, young and old, male and female, 
we are all part of God's family together. And as we're called to love God and our neighbor, then, then we look beyond ourselves to the world around us and how do we care for, support, and uplift those in our community, in our world, and particularly, as James reminds us, those who are in need. This island home of ours has gotten a lot smaller over the last you know, 18, 19 months. And as family, we have shared the challenges that the COVID-19 virus has brought upon the world. And, and we have a better sense of, of, of sharing in the struggles together, but also sharing in the healing that is taking place, uh, even if it's at a, a slow rate at times. And that has made that world so much closer from one end of it to the other. And we are called to care for all in that world, particularly those who are in need. And it's our desire to do that is at the heart of many of the ministries that we do. Today is the Sunday Supper. We've been doing it now 14 plus years. I can't even begin to tell you how many meals that we've served there. It's in, in excess of 15,000 meals over those years to people in our community in need, to people who are lonely, and, and caring for those in our community around us that are part of our family here in Brockville. The Brockville Warming Center, now the Cooperative Care Center, is motivated by the same desire to care for people in the community, particularly those who are in need. And, and we're called to have that vision of the world um, in, in all that we do, whether it be near and close at home or whether it is to care for people beyond this community, beyond this country, but around the world as well. And, I, and of course, uh, the many of us who have been supporting the people of Haiti recovering from the devastation of the recent storms there. Jesus was invited to come out and see his mother and brothers and sisters in, in the Gospels. And he looks at the crowd in the room that, that prevented his mother and brothers and sisters from getting into him. And he reminds us, these are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. That is the vision that God wants us to have. To see the world as God sees it. To see each person as a brother and sister in the Lord. To see each one as an opportunity to serve God as we meet the needs of those around us. And to continue the healing and reconciliation of the world by doing that, that Jesus has begun and continues in the world today. So the season of creation is an invitation to see the world as God sees it to celebrate this beautiful world that we live in and to advocate for the needs of people and the planet and the world and environment that we share as the family of God living on this fragile earth, our island home. Amen. I would invite you at the bottom of page four now to stand and we'll reaffirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I invite you to be seated as we continue with the prayers of the people. Today we pray for the Anglican Church. In the Anglican Communion Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. In the Anglican Lutheran Cycle of Prayer, we pray in the Anglican Church for the theological colleges and training programs within the ecclesiastical province of Rupert's Land. In the Lutheran Church, we pray for the right to water and a renewed commitment to the stewardship of creation. 
In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Thomas Belleville and the Reverend Brad Beal and the people of that congregation. We pray for our congregations of St. John and St. Lawrence and for our shared ministry. In our community, we pray for the Pure Christian Church, lead pastor Jason DeRoche. And we also pray for our friends at St. Paul's, Canon Vandilaba and Reverend Ted Guthrie, the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and Pastor Moses Prashad and Christ United Church in Lynn. Today in our parish prayer cycle, we pray for Bernice White, Carolyn White, Christine Wilson, and Terry Wilson. We pray for our clergy, Michael, and George, our staff and wardens. And we pray for peace in our countries of our world. We pray for all those responsible for distributing and giving the vaccine for COVID-19, that our world may begin to recover from the pandemic. We pray for our troops serving in many parts of our world and members of our regiment, the Brockville Rifles, particularly for those who are presently deployed. We pray for all people living in areas of conflict and for all refugees fleeing to safer countries. We pray for our planet, that we might be all faithful stewards of the earth. And now we go to page five for the prayers of the people. Creator God, Teach us to see you in the beauty of the universe, for all things speak of you. Awaken our praise and thankfulness for everything that you have made. Give us the grace to perceive that we are connected to everything that is. In gratitude, let us pray to the Lord. God, whom we love, we stand before you with open and humble hearts. In our imagination, allow us to see and hear and feel the beautiful expressions of the earth that speak to each of us. Mountains, rivers, prairies, oceans, forests, meadows, trees, and flowers. In gratitude, let us pray to the Lord. God of love, show us our place in this world as kin to all the non-human creatures with whom we share the earth. They came forth from your hand. They are yours, filled with presence and your tender love, and not one of them is forgotten in your sight. In gratitude, let us pray to the Lord. Saving God, we give thanks for all human beings on the earth, created from dust, yet crowned with glory. Those we know and those who are strangers, those near to us and those far away. All of us beautiful, all of us flawed. In gratitude, let us pray to the Lord. God of abundance, we give thanks for the sun, for water, for soil, for air, on which our lives depend moment by moment. In silence, we are aware of our frailty, our complete dependence on our beloved Mother Earth, who nurtures us and sustains our every breath. In gratitude, let us pray to the Lord. Creator God, we enjoy the abundant fruits of the earth, yet we acknowledge that we in the development world have often wasted the gifts of the earth. Take more than our share, leaving our sisters and brothers in other places in poverty and need. Renew our mind and transform us into servants of the earth so that her richness and bounty will sustain not only us, but generations to come after us. In gratitude, let us pray to the Lord. We give you thanks, God. Amen. All creation invites us to join our voices in praise to God. 
Trusting in God's mercy and grace, let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Generous God, you created us and placed us here to care for all of creation. Forgive us for turning away from you and for neglecting the earth. Raise us up and make us again stewards of your creation, that we may see your presence in all that surrounds us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Hear and receive this good news to all who long to see and encounter Christ. Today salvation comes to you and the land beneath your feet. Know that you are forgiven and free to live in peace with one another and with the earth. Amen. Would you stand for the exchange of the peace? You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The peace of our God in Jesus be with us all, with each other, with us all, and with all creation. Amen. And share the peace with those around you. I invite you to be seated as we prepare the altar for the Eucharist. As we continue with our prayers, I invite you to stand, sit, or kneel, whichever you are most accustomed to doing. And please join me in the prayer over the gifts. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts so that we might for the world be signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God of all creation. You spoke the word and all that is in heaven and on the earth, all things came to be. Your spirit hovered over the primal elements, and you brought forth life in forms innumerable, including this, our fragile earth, and we amongst its inhabitants. As our past is in you, so our hope for the future rests with you. As we have turned from your way, so we turn again to the warmth of your love. Through you all things are brought to new life. And now we give you thanks for the glories of your creation given into our care and for the opportunity we have to share that richness with all your people. And so with the wonders of creation and the songs of all pra praise of all your creatures, both in heaven and on earth, 
We praise you now forever singing. night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, work of human hands, gift of our earth, and gave thanks to God. He broke the bread to speak to us of the breaking of his body upon the cross. He gave it to his friends and said, take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He took the cup of wine work of human hands, gift of our earth, and gave thanks to God. He poured out the wine to speak to us of the pouring out of his blood. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take, this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all creation for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of the wine, do this in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, God, we who seek your reconciliation, we who need reconciliation one with another, we who hope for re reconciliation with all creation, draw close to this mystery. In being broken, split, and buried, life sprang forth again. In the breaking, there is an opening up. In the spilling, there are roots of sharing. In death and burial, there is the seed of the new life to come. As we look in our world, in our lives, and in our hearts for his second coming, keep us close to this vision that we have seen. Through the giving in the bread and wine, reconcile us to our world and give us the broken oneness, the split unity, and the buried resurrection by which we can restore your creation and fulfill your will. Send upon us and upon your creation the life-giving spirit who first moved upon the waters of the deep. Stir in us the creative and redeem the destructive. Unite us with you through the body and blood of your Son, your word made flesh, as your word has made flesh. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of your creative spirit, with all that has been, is, and will be in your universe, we stand before you and worship you, God of all, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing, and honor, and glory, and power of be yours, forever and ever.
And now as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Today Christ meets us at the table. Today salvation comes to everyone everywhere. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. as we share Eucharist today. I invite everybody to come down the center aisle in a single line and space yourselves accordingly. And after receiving your communion, to go back around the outside aisles, back to your places. For the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Jeff, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus.
Would you please stand for our concluding prayers on page 8. Together, let us pray the prayer after communion. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, so that more and more we will praise you and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Help us to trust in you and to share what we have with a hungry world. With all creatures, we look to you for our food in due season. May we do our part in restoring the balance of your creation and deepen our commitment to follow Jesus in ministries that feed and serve others. Our worship leads to the world, a world of ethnic groups, First Nations, and other indigenous peoples. All nations, their citizen leaders, that the hungry will be fed and that refugees will return home in safety and peace. And the blessing of God, the creator, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, be with the privileged and the poor, today and every day, now and forever. Thank you for joining us in worship today as we begin this wonderful season of creation and blessings on all until next time.